Hello Proitians. So now we have seen how we can configure Ubuntu with the web application, right? We actually installed the Apache on that and we saw that we were able to access the web page on port 80, right? Now, uh, is it the viable solution when you, uh, for example, you want to architect a solution for e-commerce site, right? And actually we are going to come to that level, right? So we are going to architect a solution for e-commerce site, right? Now, you would need some web servers and you would need some database servers, right? Now, for that, I mean, in the last session, what we have seen till now is that we have only deployed one server, right? With that, we can't run a uh, web application, right? What if something goes wrong on that server? Or what if you want to do some maintenance activity or patching activity, right? Can we do it? I mean, can we do it with just one server? No, right? That's not the ideal situation for a business, isn't it? We ha will have to make sure that at least one server is available all the time, right? For this, what we need to do? We need to come up with a solution which is high availability, right? And that, that means whenever we are doing any maintenance activity or any patching activity or any other, I mean, any, any system failure uh, on that server, right? For whatever reasons, we still have at least one server in place which is running up and providing service to, the, to our customers, right? Let's look at how we can deploy this, right? We are going to start with now with a very fascinating topic uh, about Azure that is about load balancers, right? So we are going to see talk about load balance in this session and we are going to look at uh, how we are going to deploy multiple web servers and then configure them on load balancer. And then gradually we are going to look at how we are going to deploy our database servers uh, in uh, behind the load balancer. Now just to give you a, a brief there are two types of load balancers. One is the external load balancer and the another one is the internal load balancer. Now, what is the difference between the two? Well, external load balancer is your public internet facing, right? So this is the load balancer which is going to accept the traffic coming from the internet. Right? While the internal load balancer is not exposed to the traffic, it might be used only for the internal uh, service requests, uh, services. For example, when you're going to configure the web server or over internet, right, you would be actually using an external uh, load balancer, which will be internet facing, and that will be accepting the traffic all over the internet. And then it is going to uh, divide the traffic to the various web servers, right? It is going to serve, uh, it's going to pass on the traffic to the various web servers. Now, web servers will in, in turn going to uh, fetch this data from the database. Right? So it will again require to fetch this information not from a single uh, database service but from a pool of database servers, isn't it? Right? So for that, you have to again configure a load balancer right? and then we will have to transfer, uh, make sure that our web traffic is coming uh, to that load balancer and then load balancer is passing on the traffic to our database servers. Right? Alright guys, I think uh, I've done enough of for talking until uh, now. Uh, let's see some uh, theory, see some PPTs and then we are going to look in uh, practically how we can achieve this. Yeah, not if we will not be able to achieve all in this session because then it is going to be a very long session but we are going to achieve this gradually, uh, maybe in two or three sessions. All right, great. I'll see you in the session then. Thank you. Welcome back to ITNs. So in this session, we will look at theoretical part of load balancer. Yeah. So what are load balancers? Right? So load balancers helps in equally distributing incoming traffic to a group of servers. Right. Load balancer is a single point of contact for its incoming traffic. Correct. And there, uh, there are two types of load balancers. So one is the internal one and the second one is the external one. So what is the difference between the both? 
okay so internal one it receives the traffic from the internal servers okay and they are they are assigned with the private ips all right they would then redirect your traffic to the internal servers right all right so what is external uh, load balancer so it is an internet facing and it receives inter uh, traffic from internet okay so in this the public ip is configured on load balancer so uh, in case if you're using a firewall uh, in front of the load balancer uh, then you would actually net a public IP to the load balancer right or you would actually define how uh, the uh, IP or how the traffic for a particular portal will be directed from the router to a particular load balancer right and then you would be defining on what ports that traffic is going to be directed right uh, to keep it very simple what we are going to do in this session is uh, yes it's going to be a theoretical one and then uh, going forward we will be looking at deploying load balancers and some servers in the back end right we will have uh, so this is going to be the architecture right so we will have some web servers right and then we will have some database servers okay now this is the one which is internet facing and that is the one which is called as external uh, load balancer right and this one is called as internal load balancer right so what happens is when when you're trying to access a traffic right for a for, for a portal why the internet it actually goes to this to the load balancer okay and then the load balancer will equally divide the traffic between the two servers all right so that is the advantage so what happens is in case if this server goes down load balancer will perform the health check and will automatically make this as down so it will not di direct the traffic to the uh, web server one okay it will only direct the traffic to this one all right um, and then in and then what happens is when the traffic is received by web servers right it is going to again direct the traffic to the load internal load balancer right and then internal load balancer will perform the same thing which uh, the external load balancer was doing that is it is going to divert the traffic to the database servers and again it is going to perform the health check uh, continuously to check if those database servers are up or down in case if any of the database servers are down then that particular database will be a uh, server will be marked as um, down and then the traffic will not be directed to that database server all right and as soon as the database server comes up it will um, it will uh, check and it will uh, mark that server is uh, up and then again it will start uh, directing the traffic to that database server so it is a continuous process it's a continuous process even though the server is up or down it is going to continuously check the uh, like in heartbeat whether the server is up or down right See? so you don't have to manually intervene to find if uh, that server is up or down and then what you can do is you can define a particular vlan or something uh, where you will have multiple database servers or multiple web servers and then it will automatically detect and it will divert the traffic to that service right so these are some of the things which we are going to look in our session um, going forward when we are going to configure some web servers and database servers right and in, in the last session we have seen that we have configured uh, the web server on ubuntu server right so similarly we will be configuring some more web servers right and then we are going to see how the traffic actually gets uh, flowed right we will be um, shutting down one of the web server and see how the traffic is flowing right okay so uh, that's all for this session uh, for additional information additional uh, videos you can actually click on this link and um, you can go through the uh, the videos that are posted on the azure library right and then for the official documentation you can go out here docs.microsoft.com slash en hyphen us hyphen azure all right all right guys uh, thanks for your time please don't forget to subscribe on the icon and don't uh, forget to click on the bell icon um, to get notified on the videos as soon as they are getting uploaded all right until next time keep watching and keep learning thank you